As you progress on your fly tying journey, the way that you're gonna be able to level up your skills and be able to tie any pattern that you want is by developing a wide variety of techniques. My name is Alex and I'm part of the team here at Ventures Fly Co. And in module four of our beginner fly tying masterclass, that's what it's all about. Today we're talking about the five techniques that you're gonna use for every single fly. Now, as we start to run through these techniques, you might be saying, well, that's obvious, but as a beginner fly tire, if you're not able to master these right off the bat, you're one, gonna have more difficulty tying flies, two, those flies that you do tie might fall apart while you're out there on the water, and three, you might even ruin the jaws on your vise. Now we don't want those things to happen, so let's dive into fundamental technique number one, securing your hook in the vise. So just as a little refresher, here we've got a hook. Here we've got the shank, and here we've got the point. And then that area leading from the shank to the point is called the bend. And so the proper way to secure your hook in the vise is to clamp down your vise jaws on that bottom corner of the bend. You definitely want to leave enough space above the jaws so you can attach materials. And if your hook happens to have a barb, placing that barb just outside the jaws can help ensure that it's in a good spot. And then you also want to make sure that the shank of the hook is horizontal. You want it parallel with your tying desk or table. Now, a few common mistakes. One, you can have the hook too far in or too far out. And if you have that hook too far in or out, it can actually damage the jaws on your vise or even the hook. And then common mistake number two is that the shank is angled either up or down. This is gonna make it way more difficult to attach materials and can cause your thread to slide up and down and not lay in the correct position. And then common mistake number three is that the jaws are too tight. Obviously you don't want the hook sliding, but if you were to crank down those jaws really, really tight every single time you put a hook in there, those jaws are gonna wear out a lot faster than if you were to have just enough pressure to keep the hook from sliding. All right, technique number two is threading your bobbin. And there are two ways to do this. The first way that I find the easiest is to use a bobbin thread. What you do is grab your bobbin and your bobbin threader you slide the collapsible thin metal wire side of the bobbin threader through the bobbin tube. Take your thread and put it through the loop. And then pull your bobbin threader back through the tube. The second way doesn't require a bobbin threader. What you'll do is take your thread and start sliding it through the bobbin tube. And then take your bobbin holder like it's a straw and suck the thread through the tube. And now that we have our thread through our bobbin holder, we're gonna move on to technique number three, which is attaching our thread to the hook. But first, let's talk about how to correctly hold the bobbin. First, you'll place that thread right in the palm of your hand, and then grip that bobbin at the top of the tube, right where those two arms meet. There's even a little grip there. All right, now that we have that bobbin holder positioned correctly in our hand, we're gonna pull out two to three inches of thread and then come in behind the hook and start to wrap around the shank. And then after we've made one or two wraps, we're gonna start to wrap the thread back on top of itself. Then once we've done that, our thread is secure and we can trim the tag in. And now that we've got our thread attached to the hook, let's talk about technique number four, which is wrapping your thread. All right, so as you wrap, there are two things you wanna keep in mind. Number one is tension. If your thread tension is too loose, you're gonna have a really hard time attaching materials and controlling that thread. If your tension is too tight, that fine tying thread can actually break while you're tying. And so there are two ways to adjust the thread tension. First is to adjust the arms on your bobbin holder. You can reduce tension by stretching them further apart or increase the tension by squeezing them closer together. And then the second way is to increase or decrease the pressure with the palm of your hand while you're tying. And then the second thing to keep in mind as you're wrapping thread 
is to pay attention to how much thread you have outside the tip of the bobbin hole. You're generally only gonna want about one or two inches of thread. Now this is gonna change if you need to attach certain materials or do some loose wraps or create a dubbing noodle. And so if you need more thread, you can just let go of your bobbin holder and then pull it down. And if you need less, again, just let your bobbin holder hang and just reel her in. All right, so now that we know how to wrap our thread, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna attach a bunch of materials to this hook, and we're gonna create a beautiful looking fly. Now, when I get to the end, if I were to just come in here and snip off the thread, that entire fly is gonna come unravel, and we don't want that. So technique number five is actually a knot that we're gonna use to finish off our fly. And it's so important that it deserves a video of its own. So if you wanna learn fundamental technique number five, how to finish off your fly, click here to watch the video.